Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 7 of Night Call. So we just had a very fun round of Dungeons and Dragons. Now we're looking for our next client and I kind of want to drive the cat. I just have to. I'm sorry. I just need to find out what the deal is here. You like the street. It looks like a postcard and you've always found it charming. <laughs> what the hell? Are we really driving a cat now? You pull up to the sidewalk and wait for your passenger. Since it looks like a no-show, you get out of the cab after a minute or two to smoke a cigarette. There's not much going on in the small town in the suburbs. There are a few apartments that still have lights on, a sweet scent hangs in the air. Eventually you stub out your cigarette and get back into the car. You jump, startled. A cat has managed to slip into the cab. It's sitting on the back seat, staring at you intently. You sit there for a moment, considering whether or not to shoo it away. But just as you're about to wave your hand, the cat shifts positions and a slip of paper falls from its collar. Pick up the paper. You pick up the piece of paper and unfold it. A fragment of a map of Paris, the Saint-Lazare train station. You turn your eye slowly to the cat. He seems to be expecting an answer. Are you going somewhere? <laughs> the, cat, the cat tilts its head to the side as if to say yes. You, you want to go to Saint-Lazare? The cat tilts its head again. How strange. Are you a dog? The cat slowly nods its head no. Your hands clutch the wheel tightly. What the hell is going on? I wonder too, I mean, how... What a strange... How many strange a accidents are going to happen in this car? Before we were driving a ghost boy, now we're driving a cat. You turn around to face the cat. This is... Okay, okay, this isn't happening. The thing is, I can't drive you anywhere. Imagine if I get inspected. What am I supposed to say? That a cat asked me to take him to Saint Lazare? They locked me up. The cat answers with a meow. You climb out of the cab and open the rear door. You let out a loud yell that echoes through the housing complex. In the distance, a dog begins to bark. The cat leaps out of the vehicle and runs across the street. All of a sudden, it comes to a stop, then lets out a heart rending meow. You could swear he's just insulted you. He turns tail in a flash and disappears into the night. Oh no! You get back into the cab. You close the back door and start the cab. In the rear of your mirror, you notice a slight movement behind you. It's soon forgotten and you drive off into the night. What the hell? <laughs> okay, well, I kind of wanted to drive it though. Let's hope that you pay better. I didn't know that it would be sh that it would shoo it away. Lucie Batas and Emily Prince. Well, they don't pay much, but hey. The two women getting in a cab give you their address. They say nothing as you start the car. A faint scent of alcohol hangs in the air. They've been drinking. After a moment's silence, the younger of the two breaks the silence. So, what do you think? About him? Who else? Of course him, not the bar. Well, I'm not sure. Strange sounds escapes her. She sighs. He seems pretty dumb. Dumb? How so? You know, dumb as a doornail, all but staring at himself in a mirror over the bar when he went to get drinks. But does that matter? No, not really. He's got a good body, good looking, lots of energy. He's got sort of animal vibe, like a little like a panther. R really like that style. You really like that style? The passengers exchange a look. The older of the two gives her friend a smile. You know exactly what I mean. 
They reach for each other's hand in the back seat of the car. The gesture is full of tenderness. A moment's silence. The older woman clears her throat. What about you? What did you think of him? The young woman gives herself a minute to think. I don't know. He was heavy, too sure of himself, and he spends too much time at the gym. Did you get that bit about... Yeah, please. That innuendo about sexual performance? Short mocking laugh escapes her. He was pretty heavy-handed with all his expertise on yoga and orgasms. True, though. Strong pelvic floor muscles can't hurt. Well, anyhow, he was all peachy. He should write a book, the perfect gift for your ex-husband. He burst out laughing. When the laughter dies down, the younger of the two resumes talking in a more serious tone. Anyhow, like I was saying, she looks at her friend intently. Is it really that important? I mean, we're looking for a donor. Not a father, not a lover, not a guardian or a godfather. Nothing but a donor. Yeah, just a donor. She casts a glance in your direction, conscious all of a sudden they aren't alone in the cab. She goes on, lowering her voice. Yes, but still... If he had been a date, I think I would have been out of there in five minutes flat. I do yoga, I meditate six hours a day, I went to Tibet to learn the ancient art of... And serfdom did exist in Tibet before the 1950s. I checked on Wikipedia. I thought Buddhists were supposed to be curious and open-minded. He was like some old conservative dude in the body of a young Brad Pitt. Pause again. But like you were saying, does all that really matter? Her friend nods. The two young women are lost in their respective thoughts. You know, I'm not against that kind of stuff or anything. It's up to him if he wants to be a drag with all that yoga and meditation bullshit. I don't have a problem with that. She gives her girlfriend a reassuring look. Anyhow, there's no way any of that is going to be passed on to our daughter. Or our son. Her friend flashes her a big smile. But it's going to be a girl, I can feel it, and yoga? It's not genetic. We'll have to ask Dr. Vidal. Yes, I bet he'd really love that, he'll think we're messing with him. He said we could ask him anything. He's going to take us for a couple of idiots, besides it's impossible, pompousness cannot be passed on to children. The younger woman doesn't seem convinced and makes an exaggerated pout. So you're saying, an ear for music, yes, that's passed on, but pretentiousness isn't? Exactly. Okay, so if you don't want to believe me... She leans towards you all of a sudden. Sorry to bother you, but did you hear what we were just talking about? No, it was so far away. Uh, yeah, I did. No need to feel embarrassed or anything, we were talking out loud after all. Her friend lets out a sigh. Come on, leave him alone. I was just asking. Alright, so... My wife and I are meeting potential donors in order to uh, conceive a baby. Her partner rolls her eyes. And we were wondering if you thought pretentiousness could be passed on to children. Genetically. You give her a look in the rear of your mirror and take a moment to answer. The question is so utterly, so utterly absurd. Leave him alone, Emily. He's a taxi driver, not a geneticist. Don't get all worked up about it. I'm just asking his opinion. I don't know. I mean, I guess your upbringing is what probably makes you pretentious, but I don't know. But I agree that maybe if you're looking for a donor or something, if you go all the way to meet him, then I don't know. I would, I guess you should also like him a little bit. I don't know. The passenger flops back into the car seat. So the answer is no, is it? You're no fun. Seriously, we should have taken another cab, driven by a genetics expert. 
She bursts out laughing. The younger passenger leans forward towards you. Oh, sorry. My partner doesn't mean anything by all that. We've had a bit to drink and it's the first time for us tonight. We're meeting donors. You pull up to the client's address and cut the engine. Be understanding. No problem. The passenger seems relieved. I'm a cab driver. I'm used to all kinds of funny stuff. I can imagine. Have you been driving a cab for long? You avoid her eye. Uh, yeah, you could say that. The passenger pays for the ride. She lets out a sudden guffaw and can't help adding, Anyhow, thanks for answering. Come on, Emily, let, that's enough. As her friend tugs at her arm, Emily starts to mumble to herself. I definitely think we should ask the doctor, just in case. We need a second opinion. You wait until the two women have entered the building, then start the car. Oh well, they gave a nice tip, thank you very much. So I would kind of like to go up there again. So maybe I'm gonna pick up her so she has to go somewhere up to town, I hope, because I want to inspect more of those sites. I hope so, at least. Oh, well. Well, but she pays a lot. Miriam Bardot, Bastille. Your next passenger has that overtired look worn by so many young Parisians. She collapses into the backseat and mumbles an address on the other side of the city. You start driving. You discreetly watch her in the rearview mirror. Her face looks familiar. Maybe she's famous, maybe you've driven her before. After a few minutes you decide she must be a babysitter, young, not necessarily wealthy, an expression of utter boredom on her face. You often pick up this kind, especially in nice neighborhoods. You sense your passenger wants to talk about the killer. It's simple, since the first murder everyone thinks they know something. Everyone thinks they saw something. It's always the same. And this passenger is no exception. How did she give us a new clue just now, having a good evening? She raises her head. Yeah, yeah. She falls silent again. The silence lasts a few seconds. Out your window, Paris is just beginning to fall asleep. Occasionally you catch her glancing discreetly at you, like maybe she recognizes you too. Several minutes go by before she dares break the silence. May I ask you something? She leans forward slightly. We, uh, you and I have already talked. You may not remember, but I was babysitting for an Iranian family and... She leaves her sentence hanging. Oh no. She smiles through her eyes. She tells you not sure you're telling the truth. Oh no. It's not at all the same situation anyway. These are new clients. And I think I'm in love with the father. Oh. You speed up unconsciously. In love? Yes, in love. She smiles at you, then looks quickly outside at the road. It's late, a few pedestrians are walking up the street, heads buried in their coats and scarves. I can't stop thinking about him. There is something warm about him, about the way he moves. He's so sweet. A bit distant, maybe a bit disconnected. Do you think you have a chance? She shakes her head. No, not in the slightest. He loves his wife. It's obvious he loves her. I can see the love in his eyes when he looks at her. Same with his son. Aw, that's nice. No, no chance whatsoever. She snickers. It's not really my style to fall in love so easily. Actually, that never happens to me. I've had a few boyfriends, one girlfriend, nothing serious, nothing... No real attachment. But this? She opens her eyes wide. She's speaking to herself more than to you. 
Her fingers slide over the window as she leaves a message you can't see from the front seat. That's why I left him a message tonight. A message? Yes, a letter. That I slipped into his coat pocket. Her eyes start to wander again. She's elsewhere. He used to play rugby. He's got an amazing build. He's got a bit of a belly now and pulls on his shirt buttons. Her eyes twinkle. I love it. It makes me melt. When I close my eyes, I picture him. She stops as if she'd only just realized she wasn't alone in the taxi. Um, uh, what are you hoping will happen? I... She stops talking but her mouth stays open. I don't really know. I hope he'll tell me how he feels. Well, if he seems to love his wife, then probably he could tell you that. That he'll turn me down. That things will be clear. I can't take this anymore. I'm worn out, tired of seeing him all the time without being able to touch him. There's one question you're dying to ask. Has he come on to you? She smiles. <laughs> no, no. It's like I don't even exist. His wife takes care of everything. She calls me, pays me, orders the cab. She's lovely. Adorable, actually. And the little kid is an angel. Always smiling, always in a good mood. He... She needs a moment to complete her sentence. He barely says hello. It's like I don't even exist. She looks away. You've almost reached your destination. Silence fills the cab. The young lady leans forward suddenly like she's surprised to find herself at the end of her street near her building. I should be ashamed, shouldn't I? Her eyes are filled with tears. She's shaking a bit. You hear from the tone of her voice that she's panicking. I don't know. I mean, it's really strange because she's she just has a crush on this guy who doesn't really even give her any attention or something. I mean, why would she even put a letter in his coat pocket? I mean, how strange is that? But I don't know. There's nothing to be ashamed about, probably. I don't know. It's not really like she's a home wrecker or something. She hasn't. I mean, it would be stupid if the wife finds the letter. I mean, that could cause trouble. I don't know, but no. She, she, she nods. Oh yes, I know I should be. I shouldn't have. You pull up to the sidewalk while she heaves an odd sigh. A stifled sob, perhaps. I'm such an idiot. She pays her fare and gets quickly out of the cab. She practically runs to her building and locks the door and throws herself into the lobby. You slowly release the steering wheel and stop to catch your own breath. You take a moment and then turn the key in the ignition. Oh, is that LV again? I'm not gonna drive you, you just never pay. I mean, I would like to visit one of those spots. But on the other hand... Is that Ade? Let's see. Annabelle Roberts. Do we know her? No. Oh, well, she pays a decent amount, so let's just drive her to... Your passenger slips into the back seat, dragging a backpack that apparently weighs a ton. Do you want to put that in the trunk? She refuses politely with a shake of the head. Thanks, bud. I'm going to have to get used to keeping it with me. I'm going to be in my back for an entire month. You smile and start the cab. A glance in a rearview mirror, your passenger is rather young and the camera around her neck looks very expensive. 
Her backpack scarf and clothes are fairly worn. Going... Where are you heading? She doesn't answer right away. She lowers her eyes. I'm on my way to Greece to join an NGO rescue vessel. Let her go on. It helps migrants trying to make the crossing. And I'm going to do a story on them. Oh, are you a journalist? She smiles the first since you set off. Uh, yes, a photojournalist. I imagine it's going to be pretty tough. Tough, yes. It's going to be very hard. But I want to do it. I volunteered. I even made a fuss to get the assignment. Her tone of voice is increasingly shrill. I read first-hand accounts. I talked to journalists who have worked on the subjects. I can't just ignore the whole thing. She gives a short laugh. I even played a video game about refugees. Beautifully done. Really powerful. I knew I couldn't just sit back and watch. This was my chance to show the world what's going on there. Her passenger's phone starts to ring. Oh, sorry, I... She glances at the caller name, her face freezes. She sighs, a troubled smile flickering across her face and takes the call. Hi, Dad. I'm in a cab. Right. Yeah, I told you. I tried, but he wouldn't change his mind. Oh, come on, Dad. I already told you I'll be fine. They wouldn't be sending me if there were... She moves the phone a bit farther from her ear. Come on, Dad, stop. Dad. Listen, everything's going to be fine. I'll be there for 20 days with a group of professionals who have been doing this for years. That's right, a group of rescue professionals. Would you just stop? She sighs heavily, it's no use. She's been down this road a thousand times. How should we help her out? I'm not gonna interfere with this. Dad, everything will be fine. No, I don't want to talk to mom. I know what she's going to say. I'll be safe. I'm... The only people in danger there are the people they're trying to help. I'm just going to take pictures. She rolls her eyes. Okay, then help her out. Oh, we're about to get to a tunnel, mademoiselle. You're going to cut out. The young woman looks up at you in surprise, then her face lights up. Uh, did you hear that? I have to go. I'll call you back as soon as I'm... She's interrupted again. Uh, that's right. I'll call back. She hangs up wide-eyed and breathes a long sigh. My parents, they can be a little much at times. She smiles. Anyhow, thanks for jumping in there. You can sense the tension, the wave of frustration and anxiety welling up inside of her. Her unhappiness and anxiety are palpable. She closes her eyes, collecting her thoughts, trying to dispel her negative emotions. If I only had a little time... Are you okay? I'm fine, it's just my parents, they're a little... Her hands flutter in the air for a moment. I'll be fine, really. It's just stress. I was just thinking that I'd like to be able to do a little yoga. It really helps me relax. It's an amazing way to unwind, to calm down and release tension. There must be a yoga room somewhere in the airport. I can pull over if you'd like. She looks at you closely, not sure what you think. What do you mean? There's a gas station up ahead. A rest area for truck drivers. There won't be anyone here right now. I... Alright, sure, why not? There's no more walk talk for a few minutes. Your passenger glances out the window every now and then. What the hell? Where are we going now? You drive past the gas station, the main building, the trucks, then get to a small quiet rest area. Clearing lit up by your headlights and the moon suddenly appears. There is no one around, the air is cool, the younger woman leads in towards you. Is this the place? You nod. It's incredibly calm, as if we were in the middle of the woods. Her eyes take in every detail, every tree and bush. Do you come here often? Whenever I can. She nods, she understands. It's so quiet, even in the middle of winter it looks so peaceful. She reaches for the door handle. You won't leave without me, will you? Uh, of course not. She gets out of the cab and puts her things on a picnic table. The wind is chilly. She shivers. 
She gives you one last look, then closes her eyes. For a minute or two, you watch her doing yoga exercises. Her eyes remain closed, her face gradually starts to relax. I don't get what the fuss is all, all about with yoga, but okay. Truck behind you pulls out of the rest area. The place has a calming effect on you too. Some summer nights, you come here to take a nap. The young woman is stretching now. The headlights cast soft shadows among the dark foliage. In the winter, you smoke a cigarette or two, waiting for potential clients to land. The young woman gets back in a cab. She says nothing. There's no need. You sense she's recovered her calm and is ready to face the rest of her journey. You drive away, leaving behind the clearing, the rest area, the gas station. The young woman is sleeping. The road keeps passing by, and before long you're approaching the airport. A moment later you turn down the radio. The song fades. I'll pull over here. It'll be easier for you to get out of the cab. You get to the airport drop-off zone. A couple of colleagues greet you with a wave. A few bleak-looking passengers are struggling with huge suitcases and car trunks. A security guard sitting on a luggage cart smokes a cigarette, clearly exhausted. Your passenger pays the fare, collects her things, but doesn't leave the cab. Thanks for getting me out of that horrible phone call. I love my parents, but they're suffocating. My father was just about to put my mother on. That would have been awful. She's convinced I started doing photography because of her. So, thank you. I have to go now. I have the feeling my parents are going to call again. Might as well go in where it's warm and I'm not a disturbance. Take good care of yourself. I will, I promise. She gets out of the cab with all her gear. Your eyes follow her as she heads to the terminal. The airport door is closed behind her. You sit there a minute or two all by yourself. There's no one around. Maybe as well head out as soon as possible. Well, thank you for the nice tip. Tomorrow we need to go for a gas station. Okay, well, well. So, there was a lot of stuff happening today. I also met a cat. Um, the next time I'm not going to send him off. I want to see what happens when we drive the cab. But next time, hopefully. I don't remember Miriam at all. Oh, it was a misclick, I didn't mean to. Also, I'm in a little bit of a stress right now because my laptop is almost dying. But I think it's almost done. So, we are going to take a look at our new info in the next episode. Also, probably analyze a little bit more of the um, case files that we got from the police. So, and that was it for night four of driving. Oh, our foot hit something again too. Well then, definitely something to read for the next episode. So, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.